Hey everyone, David Aragoda and Craig Mulkowski here taking a look at the Kentucky Oaks prep taking place on Saturday at Oaklawn Park. It is the grade three fantasy going a mile and a 16th for the three-year-old Phillies. Ten three-year-old Phillies signed on looking for a spot in that Kentucky Oaks starting gate in about five weeks time. Before we throw up the field for this race, though, I want to remind people that you should check out the new version of Timeform US that is available on DRF.com. You might have seen that early version of Timeform US launched on DRF Mobile People piece a couple of months ago. Well, you can check it out on DRF.com on your desktop PPs uh, for a limited time. If you have a classic or formulator PP uh, subscription, you have access to Timeform US for free, but that free trial is ending this week. So make sure to check it out when you're doing some handicapping this weekend. Craig, let's throw up the field of 10 runners for this race. And I think we're going to have a pretty heavy favorite here in the number six wet paint. I won't be surprised if she goes off much lower than the eight to five morning line because she's going out for a powerful stable, Brad Cox, and she comes in off two straight stakes victories. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, when I saw, first saw a big field of 10, I, I was kind of hoping maybe we would see a more contentious field. I'm not sure we got that, but I don't think it's a walkover by any means. I, I do think there are a couple of talented fillies in here as well, in addition to wet paint. Yeah, there are plenty of runners to consider. And I think what Craig is getting at is from a speed figure standpoint, wet paint doesn't look like a real standout in this race. And speaking of that, let's move into some features in Timeform US. And we'll talk about that speed figure situation in just a little bit. But before we get there, this is the Timeform US pace projector for the fantasy. And that fast pace flag is showing up. And there are plenty of runners in this field that would prefer to be forwardly placed. The horse that actually set the pace in the honeybee that many of these are exiting condensation she's shown all the way back in fourth place because there are plenty of others that want to be ahead of her early, including the number two Grand Love, who Craig probably is the fastest of them all early, but I wonder how aggressively she'll be ridden because I, was, I would imagine her connections have some concerns about the distance for her. Yeah, I never know what to make of that because to me it seems like going slower doesn't really help these speed horses. If they're going to get the distance, they should go to the front because that normally probably nine times out of ten is going to give them their best chance. Uh, you know, sometimes we see situations where maybe they want points to make the Oak starting gate and they'll ride a little more conservative. But there's enough speed in here. I'm pretty confident that that face, fast pace flag is accurate and that we're going to get some pace in here. And that is going to help the favorite wet paint. Yeah, that would suit wet paint just fine. You see, she does have that late pace flag attached to her on the pace projector and will transition right into the Timeform US finish projector, one of those new features in Timeform US, which has just launched. And uh, wet paint, Craig, not shown as the winner on this finish projector, though you see that late pace flag did carry her all the way up into third place. And I think the reason that the Timeform US algorithm is not selecting her here, and it's close, I mean, these three are basically on the wire together, but the reason that she's not being selected is her pace, uh, her speed figures are just not really the best in the field. I mean, they make her one of the contenders, but not some sort of standout as it, as the race is likely to get bet. No, and I would agree. Her speed figures are good. I think we're going to talk about the context of some of those speed figures coming up. But I also think it's always a little dangerous taking a horse who's pretty much proven to be a deep closer in a dirt route. Uh, she's also won both times uh, recently on wet tracks. As a matter of fact, I think all three of her wins have come on wet tracks. Uh, not sure if we're going to get one of those on Saturday. So that's yet another question mark for her. And yeah, so in this this particular case, I, I think the finish projector projector does a good job of laying out just uh, where the speed best speed figures are. Well, let's move on to the contenders in this fantasy, and we'll begin with previewing or reviewing, I should say, the Honeybee, which is a race that seven of the 10 horses are exiting, coming back in this fantasy from the Honeybee. And of course, the winner of that race was Wet Paint, winning her second stakes victory in a row. You also see Condensation, who ultimately finishes second, and Grand Love highlighted in this replay. But Wet Paint is the one that uh, was pretty wet at this point in the race, getting all that sloppy kickback in her face, and she comes on between between horses to get the victory here, really pulling away at the end. You see, she takes a little bit of a bump from condensation right uh, approaching the finish there, but she really lengthens her stride in that final 16th of a mile to put that field away. And 
Craig, that finishing power, I think, is what gets people really excited about her, especially when the distances eventually stretch out to a mile and an eighth in a race like the Kentucky Oaks. I guess one of the questions you have to answer with wet paint is, is she just a wet track horse? Because she's won each of these last two stakes wins in the Martha Washington and the Honeybee over wet tracks and likely to get a fast track on Saturday at Oaklawn. Right. And as I mentioned, she even broke her maiden over a sloppy track. So it's definitely a question mark. It's kind of rare for a deep closer like her to have this kind of success over an off track. I do like how she finishes her races. We we talked about the honeybee on the Time Form US pace cast. And I kind of said then I wasn't putting a whole lot of stock in the speed figure. She's a filly who's going to kind of get her numbers shaped by the way the race sets up. She's just going to sit back, make her late run. So I really have no knocks on her. The, the one issue is that 105 is not all that towering over the rest of this field. So I don't think it's the layover that many, some, some others might, uh, the walkover, I should say. I, I do think there's some competition in here, but I do expect Wet Paint to run a big race. I will say, I looked up some of the GMAX internal fractions of that race that Wet Paint ran, and she really was flying through the stretch. Uh, GMAX had her going her final uh, eighth of a mile in 12.08 seconds. So that's a really strong uh, finishing split for a horse going a mile in the 16th. Craig, I think if you want somebody out of the honeybee, it probably is Wet Paint. She was just that dominant in victory. We will take a look at the PPs of some others coming out of that race, though, including the runner up, the number 10, Condensation. You know, I remember, Craig, this is a horse that I had some interest in going into the Honeybee. She went off at a big price, 21 to 1, and I thought that we saw her maximum that day. She got a very good trip, aggressively ridden to the lead, was able to set an honest pace, and just got a little bit tired at the end. Watching that race, I didn't really feel like she was in the same league as Wet Paint and now drawn outside with so much other speed signed on. I'm not sure I want her in this spot. I think we're on the same page. I thought she ran fine. She probably ran about as good a race as she's capable of. And she was clearly second best. I mean, she was best of the rest. It, it wasn't all that particularly close. Uh, she was able to hold on second. But she had everything go her way that day. She draws a tougher post. So we're in the same camp on this one. She's not a win contender for me. The third place finisher in that honeybee was Grand Love, and she's the one that's shown the leading on that pace projector, but they chose not to go to the lead last time as they raided off that pace set by condensation. And Craig, I thought she stayed on better that day than she has in her prior two turn efforts. So maybe that's a, a positive sign that she's finally maturing and moving forward because she certainly is a horse that's bred to go two turns. And I guess that's why her connections have uh, continued on in these two turn dirt routes. I just wanted to see a little bit more development from her uh, in her first start as a three-year-old. She just kind of ran the same speed figure that she's been running uh, for the entirety of her career. Actually, her best number came in that career debut sprinting at Saratoga. So I just don't see the progression here, uh, but she is a horse that has some talent. She has talent. I just personally wonder if that talent won't be better displayed in one turn races like we saw when she broke her maiden at Saratoga with her career best speed figure. It's not a good sign when a three year old filly hasn't improved on that number. As you said, she's done been two turns in all three subsequent starts. So I tend to think, uh, particularly when I see how she loses ground in the last furlong every single time in her route races, that she's just more of a sprinter and she's not for me on the, the top end either. The fifth place finisher in the Honeybee was Toehead. And we'll actually take a look at her victory two back, the race that she ran coming into the Honeybee, when she was a pretty dominant winner of an allowance race going this mile and a 16th distance. Now, Craig, she didn't quite run back to this effort in the Honeybee. She regressed a little bit over the sloppy track. And I think it's also worth noting, this was her only start on Lasix, and it was by far the best effort of her career. So maybe she's a horse that just had uh, you know, the circumstances in her favor that day getting the Lasix on and I don't know if I can expect her to run back to that effort this time. Yeah, it's a tough call for me. You could look at it one of two ways. You could say she just didn't like the sloppy track last time. But watching the race, I, I'm not so sure. Even though she was tucked in behind horses, she seemed like she was handling it fine. She got clear in the stretch, had a chance to make a run, and just couldn't go with wet, wet paint at all. That one just blew by her, left her in her wake. So um, I think she's probably going to run better on the fast track. The Lasix, as you said, is a question, though. So she's more of an iffy type horse for me. 
we're not going to spend much time on the other horses that finished farther back in the honeybee. They'd really have to improve, although I guess Take Charge Brianna is a horse that would appreciate some pace if she comes running late for a piece. But Greg, we do want to check out the three horses that are not coming out of the honeybee. And uh, the one that seems to have the best chance is the number one. She's looking lucky. And we'll take a look at her last race when she was second in an allowance optional claimer at Oaklawn. And she did lose this race by four lengths, but the horse that's beating her punch bowl is a horse that is two for two in her career for Brad Cox and one that I know a lot of people are high on moving towards the Kentucky Oaks, even though she hasn't yet run in a stakes race. I believe she's pointing to one next week, but I think she's looking lucky was beaten by a pretty good rival and she's earned speed figures that are comparable to those of wet paint. Yeah, for sure. I, I think if Punch Bowl was in this race, she'd probably be vying for favoritism with wet paint. It, it would be pretty close, in my opinion. She's run some nice speed figures. We can see she's looking at Lucky was beaten over four lengths and still got a 103, which is right there with West, wet paint's best effort. So this is one I think has a real shot. She's moving in the right direction, particularly since, since she changed barns. Something seems to have clicked as she turned three. She's run those big speed figures. And from that inside draw, all. She's one who can be on the pace, can come from a little off of it. She almost feels like she has to get a good trip from in there. Yeah, she's really come to hand since that trainer switch to Matt Shirer, and she was very impressive breaking her maiden at Fairgrounds 2 back and proved that that improvement was uh, no fluke last time in that runner-up performance. To her outside is the number eight, Royal Spa. We'll take a look at her most recent start when she won an allowance race, just going six furlongs. So she'll be stretching back out to the two turns here. She did try two turns once prior, Craig, in that Demoiselle over a sloppy track at Aqueduct last year. I think that was just a little bit too much for her to handle on the second start of her career. She got back on track here, but I wasn't thrilled with the field she was beating. And I do have some doubts about her overall quality. Yeah, that Demoiselle has proven to be a pretty weak race. She didn't run well that day. As a matter of fact, when you look through the time form U.S. chart and you look at the speed figures for most of the runbacks, there's some slight improvement that you would expect from three-year-old fillies, but not very much. Basically, the figure's been spot on. Royal Spy is the one horse that did make a very nice jump. We can see that 15-point increase. It was on the turn back to six furlongs. I, I'm not sure she, who she really beat that day. And she's a filly I might have some more interest in if she wasn't the third choice on the morning line. It just seems a bit much uh, for quite a big jump up in class. And then the one more horse we'll talk about that's not coming out of the honeybee is the number seven. Uh, I don't know if her name is Pate or Pate. I'll go with Pate. Uh, she is making her first start off a trainer switch to Mike Maker, but this was her prior start going out for the uh, Clinton Stewart barn. And I thought that she ran pretty well this day, uh, just missing to classy Bridget, who's been in very good form, I believe, for trainer Chris Hartman. Uh, you could see she just gets turned away at the very end of this race. Craig, the big question with her is going to be distance because she's never gone beyond six furlongs. No, and she's run very well sprinting, uh, running first or second in four out of five starts. I wonder about the distance. She doesn't really run. She runs a more like a closing sprinter. She also got an ideal trip last time. But if you're looking for a wild card in a race like this, I guess she would be the one trying the two turns. Well, let's throw up our picks for this race. And Craig, we're pretty much on the same page here. I think we both acknowledge that Wet Paint can win this race. In some ways, she maybe is the most likely winner of this race. But she's looking lucky. She's got those comparable speed figures. and just seems like she's really improving right now. Yeah, she's. I'm hoping she can work out a trip from the inside. I think she's just as talented as a favorite, and she should get a head start on her from that inside post. She has better tactical speed, and I, I always like that at Oakland, and I think the fast track's going to help as well. So uh, I, I would give a slight nod to she's looking lucky. Both Craig and I have She's Looking Lucky on top in the Grade 3 Fantasy on Saturday at Oakland Park. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.